Hello everyone, in this video, we, we are going to continue the discussion on the different kinds of pen. And in this video, we are going to focus on different locations. So the location of the pen, the pen from the previous video, we have studied the different nature of the pen. And then we also want to understand from we knew that such as distending pen is, is due to qi stagnation or from level fire. But we want to locate which qi stagnation. Is it from stomach qi stagnation or gallbladder blood qi stagnation or even liver qi stagnation? How do we localize in the organs? For instance, for headache, the patient comes to you with a headache, so they feel the pain in certain regions of the head or over the entire head. So the, the patient can feel the pain in the head, and the patient can tell you which how how does they how does does the patient feel? How do the how do they feel the pain? What's the nature? Distending or stabbing pain? They can tell you that's this kind of feeding, but the feeding in different areas, such as if you they feel the pain in the head forehead, or they feel the pain on the side. Sometimes sometimes they feel the pain at the back of the head or the upper shoulder upper shoulder or neck. And sometimes the, the patient feel the pain on top of the head. So these different locations especially for headache what does it mean or why they feel in different areas that's due to the the pathways on the root of the meridian so the tai yang meridian the tai yang meridian especially from the bladder meridian of foot tai yang it travels all the way from the head to the foot travels from here that's why the patient can feel the pain in this area and also why when the fe patient feel the pain in this area at the back we call it tai yang meridian or we call it tai yang headache patients suffer from the pain on the side if you don't remember you can revise the revise the merid meridian and cholesterol the flow of the Sao Yang meridian, especially the especially the Sao Yang gallbladder meridian, that's on the side of the the head. If the patient feel the pain in the front forehead, that's from Yang Mi meridian. If the patient feel the pain on top of the head, that's Jue Yin meridian. Jue Yin, Jue Yin liver meridian they have a one path one pathway goes all the way to the head so if you don't remember the, the flow of the meridian you need to revise them in the basic theory and this is very important to distinguish which kinds of headache tai yang headache sao yang headache yang ming headache or jue yin headache this is be, these questions will be in your test. That's if, if a patient suffers from the pain in the forehead, which meridian was affected? Then you should write down as the Yang Mi meridian. And apart from the location, you also can ask the, the nature of the different, the nature of the pain, which we have studied in the previous video. So it can help you to distinguish the excess or deficiency as well as the pathogens such as if a patient feels the pain on the side of the head it can be both both sides you also can be one side so if they feel the pain in one side and then you can ask the, the nature if if they the patient feel this tending feeling then we can conclude that the patient got 
the qi stagnation in the sao yang meridian or in go blood, go blood meridian that's, that's the same if the patient feels stabbing pain in this area they will tell you then we can think that the patient suffer from blood stagnation or blood blood stasis in sao yang meridian so our treatments will focus on the qi or blood in sao yang meridian you can either use herbal medicine or the acupuncture points focus on the sao yang meridian as well as activating the qi circulation and the blood circulation so that's how to locate the or how to identify different pathogens and locations Take in excess syndrome, acute, severe, persistent, and short duration. Contributing factors include external congestion of wind, cold, summer heat, dampness, fire heat, st stagnant blood, phlegm, ascending hyperactive level fire. So these are the excess syndrome. Efficiency syndrome, dull, intermittent, coupled with insidious onset and long duration. As you can see from here, acute, persistent, dull, intermittent. These are different terms or different descriptions we have studied in the previous videos. That's how we're going to use those information to distinguish excess or deficiency the factors can be qi blood in essence falling to nourish the head the headache also can be caused by the eyes ears or nose problem such as uh, such as the sinuses so as you can see from here, we focus on the, the causes, we focus on the blockage, the wind, summer heat, all these pathogens going to block the meridian or falling to nourish the, the meridian or the specific area. So these are the two causes of the pain which we introduced at the beginning of the the introduction of the inquiry of pain. One is the blockage, one is the lack of nourishment or falling to nourish. That's the same saying. So if, if after this two videos and you forget everything, at least you need to remember that the cause of the pen that's due to the blockage or due to lack of nourishment so where, wherever there's a pen there's a blockage you need to remember at least you need to remember these two causes the second one is the chest pen chest pen refers to the in the midline or both both sides of the chest chest pain is often associated with the problems of the heart and the lung so this pain is localized in the chest area right in front of the heart or behind the sternum or in the both sides of the chest this is mostly related to problems due to heart problems and lung problem so from this two how do you know it's due to a heart problem or lung problem you also can di distinguish from the associated symptoms associated symptoms so from this kind of pain we need to ask the location the nature the nature from the previous video and also other symptoms such as the location if the patient feel the pain behind the sternum and have a burning sensation 
that might be heart attack due to the blood stasis of the heart from the heart. The, the associated, associated symptoms, as you can see here, severe chest pain, great complex, hold hands and feet, that might be heart attack. Or if the patient feel the pain or the tightness or oppressive pain and the tightness in the chest, it can be either side, although it writes here left side, it can be either side, it can be from the lungs problem. If the pain is from the left side only, it can be the heart problem. The heart problem, when we study the therapeutics, we have an, a, a kind of a disease called chest B. So that's a, the disease name in acupuncture. This, the pain in the chest B is the translation from Mandarin that's called pain. So chest pain, we also call it chest B. So from the associated symptoms, you can see from the heart or from the lung. These two are from the heart, but the, this, this one is severe. And especially for my, my cardio infarction, the description will be worse than the, the pain. Can from the chest, chest to the back. The pain can travel from the back to the chest. So these are different associated symptoms of a chest pain. With the chest pain, with the cough, and with the sweating, especially the, the sweating in the afternoon, do you still remember what that means, the sweating in the afternoon? That is sweating due to indeficiency, especially for lung indeficiency. So you can see that the patient can have chest pain, such as the chest, such as the, the lung TB, with mild fever, with sweat, idle fever in the afternoon. As you can see from here, when we talk about the, this disease, the lung TB, you can see the chest pain. That's the inquiry from this video. Cough, the flushed cheek, that's from inspection, night sweat, that's from the inquiry in previous video, idle fever, that's from the first video from, of, inquiry, of inquiry, of the in the inquiry of coldness or fever, chills and fever. So as you can see, as the more we study, we actually going to integrate integrate more and more information. That's why you need to revise in time. Otherwise, you will be confused because we add, we actually adding more and more knowledge that we have introduced in these few weeks. The patient with flank heat and blood stasis obstructing the lung can present with chest pain, strong fever, and bloody pus with strong odor. So this is the similar to the inflammation of the lung. And this in Chinese medicine, we think, we think that's due to the phlegm heat. Due to the phlegm and due to the heat in the lung and blood stasis, so these are the common cause of inflammations or of the pneumonia. When we study in the therapeutics, we will discuss more. But from here, we need to understand the heat, the blood stasis, why the patient will have bloody pus. So that's how to use the previous theories to explain the clinical manifestations or symptoms, bloody pus, 
Firstly, the patient have a pus or have the phlegm. That's due to the, the organs dysfunction. Which organs can cause the pus? The spleen, right? The spleen can cause the pus because of the water trans transportation and transfer transformation. And then the lung is the container of the, the pus. That's why the pus will keep in the lung. Why the pus is bl a bloody pus? The bloody pus, the bloody is the bleeding. So in this in this situation, the blood move out of the body. The blood move out of the the vessels. The blood move out of the vessels and it mix with the pus there. That's why we said bloody pus. Now you need to think about why the blood can, will move out of the, the vessel. There might be two reasons. One is the, the qi deficiency, which means the qi, which especially the wei qi, could not hold the blood in the vessel, so they move around because the qi deficiency. The second is the heat. The fire in the body, the heat tend to burn the, the vessel. So once the vessel get burned, was broken, the blood also can move out. So for this bloody pus, you need to think about which the what's the cause of the bloody pus from our theory. Now, if the bloody pus is due to qi deficiency, you're going to tonify the qi. Tonify the qi to hold the blood in the vessel. If the blood, the bleeding is due to heat, you're going to clear the heat in the blood, reduce the burning of the vessel to recover. So here we give you another example of the same disease with different treatments. That's the symptom differentiation and treatment variation. So as you can see from here, the more we study, we are going to introduce little bit by a little bit how we're going to use all these theories to explain our clinical manifestations, to explain our symptoms from the patient. So if, if the patient presents with a chest pain and fast breathing, a strong fever or red face can be the lung problem. As you can see, why sometimes we say the, the chest pain related to the heart, why related to the lung, sometimes related to the lung. So the patient presents with a chest pain, that's the something in common. They have a chest pain, but the associated symptoms some related to the lung, the bloody pus on the lung, some related to the heart, such as palpitation and only sensation behind the sternum. So we begin to dis distinguish from the different manifestations from the associated symptoms as well. And in the ribs area, this one is, is not complicated, it refers to the pain on one or both sides of the ribs area, contributing area, liver cheek stagnation, damp heat in the liver and gallbladder, fire hyperactive activities of liver and gallbladder, stagnation, blood obstructing the meridians and fluid retention in the chest and diaphragm. As you can see the con con contributing factors, we have list. We have listed some of the factors, but you can see there's something in common. Something in common. That's liver, liver or liver. Why the pain in the ribs area? 
it says that's the related to the liver. That's also because of the meridian. The liver meridian, where does the liver meridian distribute? That's from the foot to the external genitalia and to the ribs area to the chest. So you can revise the, the liver meridian. That's why we're going to refer to liver a lot. Gastric pain. This refers to the pain affecting the stomach. So the patient can feel the pain in the stomach area. It's actually behind or just below the sternum. So the sternum, the patient may, that's the, the, the ribs, the patient may feel the pain around here or here. The contributing factors is excess gastric pain, including cold, heat, cheese stagnation, standing blood, and food retention. As you can see here, these are the pathogens that can block the pathways of qi and blood movements. Efficiency pain often caused by failure of stomach in and or yang to nourish the stomach. So one is excess, one is deficiency. Excess is some symptom aggravated by eating. Wherever get your pain in a deficiency symptoms can be alleviated after eating. So why the eating? Sometimes the patient comes to you with stomach ache. Then we will ask, when do you feel the pain? Do you feel worse before meals or after meals? The reason why we're going to ask this is because we want to distinguish excess or deficiency. You see, for excess, excess syndrome, the patient will dislike being pressed. Being pressed, that's because that's the another symptoms of excess syndrome. They don't like being pressed because pressing can make them worse. Deficiency, they would like to be pressed. So if you use your hand to press the, the stomach to press the abdomen, that's pressing from outside the food, the meals. It's an, similar to another pressing from inside. That's why the excess syndrome will be aggravated by eating. The deficiency syndrome will be better after eating. Abdominal pain. Abdomin, abdominal pain is actually quite big range. So abdominal pain, the ribs, sternum, the whole abdomen, above the papillary bones. So the whole abdomen we call abdominal pain, except from the gastric pain. So in this area, we call stomach ache or gastric pain from the other area. All other areas because abdominal pain. Abdominal can be divided into four parts the upper, the lower, bilaterals, or peri umbilical abdomen. Abdominal pain often results from object circulation of a meridian, qi. So, no matter from which area, when they feel the pain, we refer to qi and blood, the blockage, the malnourishment of zhang. So again, we focus on the blockage and lack of nourishment. The factors include the cold retention, heat accumulation, Qi stagnation, 
basis the food retention and parasites as you can see from here we have mentioned quite a few or quite a lot actually quite a lot of pen different kinds of pen different nature of the pen and we have introduced a lot of contributing factors we introduce cold retention, heat accumulation, cheese stagnation, blood stasis, food retention. No matter what kinds of contributing factors, even the one I didn't write here, we give you these examples that we only want you to understand what can cause the blockage such as here, if, it, if you write in the test, you, you write dampness, you're also going to be, you're also going to get your marks because dampness is a physical pathogen. This can object the, object the pathways of qi and blood that also can cause abdominal pain. And the deficiency can cause by qi deficiency, blood deficiency, yang deficiency, even yin deficiency. Although we didn't write here, because so from here you need to understand the rules of these. That's how to remember. Otherwise, you won't be able to remember all of these, such as headache. Then we talk about chest pain. Now we talk about the abdominal pain, gastric pain, all these different kinds of pain. What's the in common? So when you study the diagnostics, you got a lot of pathogenesis. You got a lot of contributing factors. You need to study what's in common, and that will help you to remember and help you to analyze more flexible in your practice because these are the general laws in the pen. Patient with spleen yang deficiency presents with dull upper abdominal pain that alleviates up from warmth and pressure coupled with reduced food intake and loose stool. Couples with only means that associates with other symptoms, these symptoms. So the patient with this thin yang deficiency, as you can see that before when we talk about the patterns, we gave you the location of zhang fu, yin and yang, excess or deficiency. That's the pattern. With the dull pain, upper abdominal, the area, how to relieve from warm, that's, that's due to yang deficiency. Yang deficiency will cause the coldness, so that's the warmth can relieve. Because of deficiency, so the patient prefer being pressed. So that's how to analyze the symptoms. So if in a test, if I ask you why the patient, this, this patient, you prefer being pressed, prefer the pressure, or why the warmth, the warmth bottle can relieve the pain. Now you need to explain from our theories, because deficiency will prefer pressure. Yang deficiency will cause coldness, and coldness, situa coldness situation we prefer warmth, oh, so that's why the warm environments or warm objects can relieve the pain. Okay. And then the loose stool, reduce food intake, loose stool, you're going to understand in future when we study the, more about the, the symptoms. You will see the loose stool is actually one of the symptoms of yang spleen yang deficiency. So 
that's associating associating symptoms. Patients with, with damp sheets in the bladder present with abdominal fullness, distending, and pain. Frequent, urgent, difficult, painful urination. So that's the symptoms related to the blood. If the patient presents with abdominal pain, but also have these kinds of symptoms, then you need to treat the blood. That's from the blood problem. Women may be related to the menstrual cycles. This is due to the coldness in the uterus. That's why for painful menstru menstruation, some women, some ladies, they prefer the warm bottle in the lower abdomen can, re can help them to relieve the pain. Patient with cold retention in liver meridian, again, we mentioned the liver meridian, presents with contracture, contracture and cold pain in bilateral lower abdomen. This radiates towards the external genitalia. So they feel the pain in the both sides of the both sides of the atom of the atom, these two areas that can radiate to the external genitalia. This is the liver meridian. This is also related to the distribution of liver meridian. So as you can see, we actually use the meridian theories a lot to distinguish which organs are affected. The backache, the back pain, refers to the pain from the neck to the lower back. And this is often related to the two meridia, blood meridia, and three hand meridia, and the yang meridia. That's because of the the meridian travels from there. And low back pain, the the cause again, what's the cause of the back pain? On the blockage, what can cause the blockage? From lack of nourishment, what can cause lack of nourishment? So we have used, so at the beginning, you see for these a few videos, we explain very slow, that we try to help you to, to learn to explain these symptoms. And from here, although I didn't write here, what's the cause of the back pain? You can think about what's the two, the blockage and the lack of nourishment. The blockage can be cold, can be dampness, can be anything else that can cause blockage. Okay. So that's, you can learn to explain in this way low back pain or sometimes they call the lower back pain that's the on the back we separate into upper back middle back and lower back the lower back is actually from mostly from l1 to s5 so the lower back pain refers to pain in the middle spine on both sides of the lower back it's actually a more general area of the lower back the low back is related to the kidney, especially for kidney deficiency, cold dampness, stagnate, stagnant blood, kidney stone, damage of thigh meridian may contribute to low back pain. Why the low back pain is related to the kidney? That's because the low back is the mention of the kidney. You still remember the basic theories when we studied the uh, when we studied the uh, Zhang Xiang theory, the mention of the kidney. 
the low back and waist area. He says that's the dimension of the kidney. So the kidney problem will reflect in the low back and the knee as well. That's why in the low back pain treatments, sometimes we will focus on the we will focus on the kidney. Kidney deficiency may cause dull, continuous pain with soreness and weakness. So these are different explanations. You can go through them. Renal stones. This kind of pain may cause bloody urine, sudden severe pain, and radiates towards the bilateral low abdomen. So this kind of pain, this pain is very different. It's a sharp pain and sudden, with sudden onset and severe pain. So that's how to distinguish from kidney deficiency or ren renal stones. Pain in four limbs. This refers to pain in muscles, tendons, and joints of the four limbs. This mostly seen in B syndrome. B syndrome. So from here, you only need, need to remember B syndrome. B syndrome. This is uh, one disease we're going to study in uh, therapeutics. Many refers to joint pain. Again, what can be the causes? What's the contributing factors? Blockage, what can cause the blockage? Wind, cold, dampness, damp heat, blockage, right? The second, what, what can cause the lack of nourishment? Deficiency, also can cause the nourishment. Right here, it's good. Have you, have you been right here? No, we didn't. Especially for the patient with the deficiency or with chronic disease. After a long term disease, they will have deficiency. This will cause lack of nourishment and cause the, the pain. So, as you can see, although from here, we didn't rise here. You also can say that from the lack of nourishment, winding pain is primarily associated with the wind, because the wind will move here and there. So if especially for the joint pain, if the joint pain move from one finger to the other fingers, from the hand to the foot, that's the wandering pain. Okay, so these are different pens associated to different areas. Localized pen that aggravates in rainy, cloudy days associated with the dampness. So sometimes the patient will tell you that they feel the pen worse if the climate change changes, especially before a rainy day or cloudy day, because the dampness in the environment will increase the dampness in our body. That's why they will feel worse. Swollen painful joints with bone sensation are associated with damp heat. So from from the inspection, we're going to study in future, you're going to see, observe the joints as well. So these are different kinds of pain in limbs. Aching pain in the heels, shins or knees in elder in senior patient associated with the kidney deficiency. That's because of the kidney meridian move travels from here. You still remember where the kidney meridian travels? Travels through the heels. Okay. So here, from the heels pen, that's why if the patient 
suffer from the heel pain, you're going to treat the kidneys as well. The last session is the general body pain, refers to pain throughout the body. It can be either parts or in multiple sides of the body. The acute excess syndrome often caused by what can cause the blockage of jutting. You see, everything we always say of jutting. Deficiency, what can cause the deficiency? I live on the age, that's why it says elderly. Okay. Patient with chronic condition or weak constitution and results in qi and blood falling into the nourish the body. So as you can see here, this is actually the last part of our inquiry of the pain. So from this, you can see all kinds of pain we have discussed for two videos. With different kinds of pains, different symptoms, but you need to have two causes. You need to remember two. One is blockage, objecting. What can cause objecting? The wind called dampness, phlegm. And water and water retention, all kinds of pathogens that can cause blockage. The second is falling to nourish. What can what's the common cause of qi and blood deficiency? Here from this description, we actually give you the common causes of qi and blood deficiency or qi and blood, why the qi and blood will, will fail to nourish. That's the senior people, the age. Patient with chronic diseases or people with a weak body constitution will cause the qi and blood fading to nourish. Because they are weaker, they don't have enough qi and blood, or they consume the qi and blood for after long term. So that's the, the pain, the general inf introduction of the pain, or the causes, the pathogenesis of the pain. After these two video, after these two videos, at least you need to remember that's what's the cause of the pain. So how to remember these all these different symptoms and all these different contributing factors? You need to think the you need to remember the the root or the chains. That's how they develop. How to analyze these symptoms? The pain can cause by deficiency. That's one can cause by lack of nourishment. From deficiency, from from sorry, from excess, from the blockage, and from deficiency. So from blockage, what can cause blockage? What pathogens can cause deficiency? The wind, the cold, the heat, the fire, the flame, the dampness, the parasites, the storms, and so on. Right, all kinds of contributing factors. What can cause lack of nourishment? In other words, what can cause the deficiency? Firstly is the qi deficiency and blood deficiency, yin and yang deficiency. And these deficiencies are caused by age, chronic diseases, weak body constitution. So from here, it will be much easier for you to understand or to remember all these symptoms and pathogenesis. For the PEM, you only remember excess blockage, deficiency, and then from what can cause blockage, what can cause, de cause deficiency. Okay, so we're going to 
stop here and let the discussion on the different kinds of pen, different nature of the pen, and as well as the cause, pathogenesis of the pen. Thank you guys.